everything about that story just seems a little too convenient. Right from the discovery of the vault, I just can't shake the feeling that something's off. Of course, it was planted. Come on. It's a trap. I expressed the feeling that I had the, from the start of the day, quite frankly. It seemed too good to be true, but it was unwavering proof. But it was too perfect. Sickingly, sickingly so. Sickeningly so. That was my feeling. You might actually be onto something by saying it's a little, all a little too perfect. Meaning, <laughs> get to the point, old man. The truth is, I heard a little something from a friend of mine in the fourth division, where Oryu Sonozaki re referenced the kidnapping of the minister's grandson. She referenced it? Yeah. It's been several days since the minister's grandson has been kidnapped. Poor boy. It'd be nice if they let him go soon. It seems that old or old Oryu muttered something like that while on her veranda. And that little musing was conveyed to the various people working deep behind the scenes at the Sonozaki family. Right, I'd heard something earlier from Sato, the informant. And probably Oishi as well, because let's be real here. Oishi knows fucking everything, because he's a corrupt person. That when the leader or you had a concern, somebody in the family would be considered. Wait, wait, what? Hmm, sure. Whatever that means. So in essence, she gave the order to re release the hostage. I see it that way. The wallet being conveniently discovered was just a ploy to hand the boy over to the police. Why would they release the hostage? Because they already got what they wanted. The dude's gonna, uh, canceling the dam, probably. I guarantee it. Ah, ah, ah. Well, there's only one reason why someone would release a hostage, isn't there? What is it? Oh my. Oh my god, they met, he met the demands. Come on. Don't be stupid. They reached a deal. That would mean the minister promised to halt the Hinomizawa Dam project. Three, two, one. The damn project uh, will definitely go away. At that moment, those words that the girl had said re resurfaced in the back of my mind. God, she's fucking psychic. In the end, it was turning out exactly as she had proclaimed. That young girl knew the circumstances. I'm telling you, she's fucking either... She's... Uh, there's something really fucked up with her. Either possession, or straight up she can see the future. She knew everything about this kidnapping incident, from the beginning to the end. Akasaka. The girl unexpectedly called my name. Oh, what the fuck? Stop it. What is it? Go back to Tokyo. Huh? Before long, you will woefully regret coming to this village. I already have. That would be an incredibly pathetic thing to see. So I thought I'd warn you right now. Why would I come to regret it? Stop whining. When you tried crossing the road when, it, when the don't walk sign was up, did your parents finish explaining why it was dangerous before pulling you back to the sidewalk? They'd pull you back right away, wouldn't they? They'd pull you back before explaining why it was dangerous, wouldn't they? In other words, it's something like that. <laughs> Fuck, stop. Stop, oh, God. A fucking laughing children. It's always fucked up. The girl who never knew everything from start to finish had warned me in the beginning, go back to Tokyo. Well, it probably is for the... I would have. When some possessed person tells me to do something, I do something. Akasaka is such a coward. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, 
Uh, stop it. We'll probably find the boy, but what happens afterwards will probably be a bit of a problem. How will it be a problem, though, is something a single officer like me can't figure out. Do you know? A girl named Rika Frude. What I had said... What I had said were, was such a non-sequitur that Oishi sat in stunned silence for a while. Of course I know her. She's the only daughter of the Frude family, one of the three families. What kind of girl is she? Well, wow. This was an unexpected name to hear. I'm a bit surprised. Does public safety think that the Frude family smells fishy and wants to keep an eye on them? Share some of that information with me, please. Oh, no, it's not like that. It's just something caught my it's just something that caught my attention. Hmm. <laughs> well whatever. It wouldn't do it wouldn't do to not answer a question from a friend I've sat at the same table with. I'm honored that you call me a friend. I'm not. I'm offended that you call me a friend. I hate you. <laughs> so that little lady is well, somewhat of a village mascot. She's beloved by everyone in the village. Some of the older folk worship her especially. Worship? Hmm, I don't know much about it, you see. Girls born in the Frude family have somewhat of a sacred implication, it seems. It's one of the local beliefs in Inamizawa. The living incarnation of Oyashiro or something like that. Or so the story goes, apparently. Oyashiro-sama. Now that you mention it, I think I saw Oyashiro-sama written on some of the Alliance banners. What is Oyashiro Sama exactly? A good old curse. That doesn't exist. Fuck your curse, it doesn't exist. Ah, it's the name of the guardian deity of Hinamizawa. They believe it will exact punishment on those who do ill towards the village. Well, if there was such a convenient god around, the guys at the dam would have long since been gone. Well, done. Would have long since been done in by divine justice. Luckily, nothing like that has happened to anybody just yet. Yes. I'm so glad the foreman dies. The grandson of the minister who trifled with the village as a result of Oyashiro Sama's anger was. What do they call it again? Alright, oh, Ona Kagushi. The minister's grandson was demoned away. That would probably be how the script is being read. Oh, God damn it, I don't know who's talking. Fuck me. Oh, I see. It probably would turn into something like that. Divine punishment wrought by Oyashiro-sama. And the culprit is the living incarnation of Oyashiro-sama. That girl. <laughs> Even I didn't know exactly what I was saying, the fact that Oishi laughed it off as a bit of, was a bit of a relief. Oishi's joyous laughter was so infectious that I began to laugh like an idiot as well. Fuck me, I, I, can, I always lose track of who the fuck's talking. I just give my best guess. Oh, it's unusual. Oishi, after laying into the horn several times, rolled the window down and leaned out, waving his arm in an exaggerated manner. There was a car headed the opposite way. Until now, we hadn't run into any other cars except our own. And of all places, it was this at this desolate location. It seemed that Oishi knew the owner of that car. The other car also chirped its horn and came in to a stop. Dr. Irei, good afternoon. Oh, god damn it. Didn't Irei hate o Oishi, though? Because he's such a bastard. The other car's windows window rolled down slowly, revealing a young man in a white overcoat. He was about my age, or perhaps a little bit older. But you really can't judge somebody by their appearance. Why is it, if it isn't Oishi? Good afternoon. Haha, <laughs> fancy meeting you here. I hate it. That's my line, Doctor. I never thought I'd see you here. <laughs> what happened? Oh, nothing, just a little house call. Oh, really? What's an emergency? No, nothing quite that serious, thankfully. Oh, huh. I'll take my leave here. If I don't get back quickly, my staff will be angry with me. Ah, ah, ah. Being the head of the clinic must be tough. Well then, take care. 
The young doctor named Ire, after gesturing his farewell, drove forwards and soon disappeared toward around a corner. Oishi also drove, drove forwards, but soon came to a stop again. He pulled out a worn map book from the dash. His expression didn't have an ounce of ir ir irreverence. He was perfectly serious. Why would it... any hint of, you know, jokingness? No, I wouldn't say irreverence. I don't know. I just wouldn't use irreverence in that situation. Because you're not paying reverence to the map. I don't know. It's weird. Oh, just a different word choice of what I'd use. What is it? A clinic shouldn't be making any house calls today. It must have been an emergency or otherwise a patient with some extenuating circumstances. Oishi flipped through the pages, opening up to the map of Taketsudo. After that, he took a long a look around and started to figure out what our current location was. Trying to figure out where our current location is. Are you saying that emergency is suspicious? Hell yeah. Didn't I say? There's hardly anybody that lives in the Takatsuda area. The road we're on right now is here. Dr. Yuri came from this direction. Mm hmm Having no sense of our surroundings, I couldn't digest anything about the places he was indicating on the map. That's when he just say, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. So what's the point of all of this? At the very end, that's what you say. We're headed towards the spot where the wall was found. By the way, that's over here. But see, if you're heading into the one of the few residences in Takatsudo, it's the wrong road. Meaning Dr. Ure came from a direction where there were no residents. As long as somebody working in the fields between those mountains didn't collapse. But if somebody collapses and you call a doctor, normally you'd bring them back with you for a more detailed examination. But just now, Dr. Ure said it was nothing serious. It didn't seem like anybody else was in the car with him. Unless they're in the trunk. He's part of the whole conspiracy. Oishi didn't say any more than that. I also said nothing more. That doctor just now examined a patient. Close by. Only that... The noisy radio had suddenly gone quiet. The sky had just turned an oppressive color. As Oishi mused that it's, it might start to rain, a torrent down, torrential downpour started, as though trying not to disappoint him. Thanks, you fucking Oishi. Eventually, Oishi stopped the car. The only sounds to break the silence were the percussi percussions of the rain on the roof and the soft squeak of the windshield wipers. Let's do, let's do this a bit hush-hush, shall we? Saying that in a quiet voice, he exited the car without an umbrella, careful not to make any noise. Oishi leaned over, indicating the other side of, indicating the other side of the thicket. He was pointing to a prefabricated shed and a car that was parked beside it. Oh, that's not suspicious at all. The car looked obviously well cared for. It wasn't a vehicle that had been left there for several years. Why would you park nearby? You're supposed to park that somewhere else and then walk to the shed. Come on, guys. It's not that hard. What's that shed? It contains equipment used by the Forestry Service. I heard that they don't go near it except during the summertime. Does that car belong to somebody from the Forest Service, then? Forestry Service, then? They wouldn't leave their car. Don't know. It doesn't look like an official vehicle, though. And plus, it would have a logo on it. I wish he was playing it cool, but my nervousness was gradually increasing. Pull your guns. Just in case. Saying that, Oishi returned to the car. Grab the guns, pull them out. I thought he was going to get an umbrella, but he had grabbed the onboard radio instead. Hello, oh, this is Oishi. Uh, Deering. Greetings. Greetings. <laughs> yes, this is Okinami SP. Oishi, we read you loud and clear. Over. I'm currently in front of the for Forestry Service Equipment Shed. Not the one in the direction of Yaguchi. The one in Taketsudo, if you head th there from Hinamizawa. Affirmative, affirmative. Copy that. There's some suspicious people in the shed. Proceeding to investigate. If you don't hear back from me in five minutes, get in touch with the local police substation and have them send a cruiser as soon as possible. A cruiser send like three. If you would, please. 
Understood. Well then, shall we take, go take a look? No, oh, huh, huh. I would wait until you get back up. I would have asked for an additional cruiser. Since he was, he was first confined here, he had heard the sound of a car multiple times. So he thought, just thought the far off sound was more of the same. However, the reaction from his captors was, until now, something he hadn't seen before. They jumped, reacted as if, they jumped, reacting as if shocked by a jolt of electricity and pressed against the window. Cautiously peering outside, they stopped. Somebody from the forestry service? This is bad. Ah, oh, looks like a cop to me. One of the captors lifted the boy by his collar and pressed the blade against his cheek. Hey kid, keep quiet for a bit. I think you know this, but if you try and shout, there'll be problems. Toshiki and you guy, I was sure that the doctor had reported things to the police. No, the doctor didn't do shit. <laughs> he is useless. He had felt relief when he thought that he was saved, but not imagining that his captors would resort, resort to violence when they were concerned, his anxiety remained unabated. Fucking pull out your guns, come on! Well, not them, but the police. I would. You kidding? Once they say, oh, there's a car there, whoop, well, gun out. Shoot first, ask questions later. Especially in a hostage situation. Well, no, no, that's not true. When you know there's a kid involved, you don't want to shoot the kid. But you should presume that they're armed. So you better be ready to defend yourself. What do we do? Gotta buy time. Take the kid and slip out of the back. We'll meet you back here when the heat's off. One of the perpetrators grabbed the boy by the collar and forced him to stand. Of course, Toshiki and you guy tried to resist by feigning that his illness had been aggravated by this rough treatment. But his captors paid no heed. Yes, because this is a little more important because they know if they're found, they're fucked. So, a little discomfort's fine. Bang, bang, bang. Police, open the damn door. The door was violently banged upon. Excuse me. Oh, oh. Bang, banging. Proceeding to just let, fucking kick the door down. Fuck it. The door was banged on again. Toshiki and you guy hesitated for a moment to respond to that voice by yelling. You would get your throat slit wide open, kid. However, while he was being indecisive, his mouth was covered, taking that option away from him. You'd be dead. The leader of the captors waved at the other to go. The younger perpetrator nodded in response and while keeping the boy's mouth covered, started heading towards the back door. Oh, you all need some. How do you do? It's the police. Would you mind opening the door? No, oh, oh, oh. there's sudden rain has us in a bit of trouble. Uh, I'll just so. Uh... The moment the lock was undone, you what? What a dumbass! Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm I'm indisposed at the moment. Please hold on. I'll be right at the door. You act like this like really decrepit old woman that can't move very well. I'm coming, don't yell at me. Slowly unlock the door. In the moment the lock was undone, Oishi forced the door open. Obviously, that's when, once you hear the door unlock, that's when you either just shove it as hard as possible or kick it down as hard as possible. And with a gleam of menace in his eyes, he pushed the man aside, he pushed the man aside as he start, stepped into the room. Then in the small and empty room, he was able to quickly discern that the boy was looking for was looking for was nowhere to be seen. Mm -hmm. I heard this was an equipment shed for the forestry service, but there's nothing here at all. There was nothing inside the room that would indicate that this was a store was an equipment shed. There was only a mountain of blankets indicating that somebody was sleeping here, alongside empty food packets strewn about. Oh, it's been empty for some time now. Never seen no equipment stored around here. This is the forestry service building, isn't it? Are you from the forestry service? How about you, police? The two of them glared at each other suspiciously. Both the Weishi and the man steadfastly refused to reveal their identity before the other did. The man, judging from the sharp look in Oishi's eyes, realized that it would take would, that it would hard. Hmm. It would be hard to talk his way out of this one. 
It would hard. God damn it. See, the good thing is, half the times it's just like weird word choices or forgetting a B to be in there, or just would be. Thank God. So I don't look completely stupid. No matter what he said, the most time he. The most time he could buy would probably be only would probably be only a few dozen seconds. Only the sound of rain filled this tense moment. Just then they heard the sound of a struggle from far off. Oishi had a hunch. There was no doubt that Akasaka who was circling around back had run into the perpetrators who were trying to get it, trying to slip away. There you go, boy. Your boy Akasaka doing work. That's what I would have done as well. I knew it wouldn't have mattered. Your better chance would be waiting inside, though, honestly. Because if you saw two people getting out, they're not both going to be at the front door. Someone's going to be watching the back door. They're not stupid. So, the best way to do is barricade both doors and hope to God. Or barricade one really, really well and the other not so much. So then they focus all their effort, hopefully on one door, and once they break through it and say, it's open, and then, you know, the two of them go inside. One, like that, and that whatever leader guy, whoever's inside, tries to hold them back as long as possible as the other guy goes out the back. Either way, you're fucked. You're fucked when two people come by. Especially when you don't have guns. I would have figured if you're associated with a mob, you'd have a gun or two. Come on. Let's go. Akasaka doing work. As Oishi thought that, the man in front of him reacted a moment faster. The man swung with an attack that was more intended to obscure Oishi's vision rather than actually hit him in the face. Oh, I would have been swinging to knock him the fuck out. Break his nose, everything. Fuck Oishi. A quick knee to the groin. You know, anything. Just destroy his ass. Seizing his opportunity, the man aimed to kick at Oishi's groin without any hesitation. Hell yeah. But he missed his mark and was unable to land that critical blow. How do you miss? Actually, no. I know so many people that have tried to like either knee someone in the, in the balls or kick someone in the balls and miss. And I just laugh and it's like, how do you miss? It's not hard. You just square up your target and go. It's not. It's really not that hard. My I laugh when someone tries to knee someone in the balls and misses because that's just beyond my wild. It's just like what the fuck's wrong with you? How do you miss? You have complete control of where your knee goes. Like with your foot, it's a little, you know, you have to, it's a little farther, but your knee is so close to your body when you just bring it like that. It, just, it blows my mind how someone can miss a target like that. With any kind of hit with your knee, you shouldn't miss. The man trying to pin Oishi grabbed him by the base of his neck and with both hands and fiercely tried to push him down. Get him in the full Nelson! But as Oishi fell backwards as a... But as Oishi fell backwards, as if kicking the man upward, he dug his foot into the man's midsection. With that leg acting as a fulcrum, the man was flung by by the falling Oishi as if by a full uh, circle throw. The two of them squared off in the pouring rain. Please kill Oishi. I want him to die. I really do. I hate him. <laughs> Isn't this interesting? You wanna go? <laughs> Come on, you little piece of shit. I'm ready for this. If not, I'll just shoot you in the back of the head like an animal. Oishi, as if trying to cheer himself on, grinned smugly. He then stood up while brushing the mud off of himself. Even though he countered the assault, Oishi was getting up rather awkwardly compared to the man who he threw, who swiftly sprang to his feet. Oishi, hurry! Akasaka's voice rang out from the distance. Judging from the distress in his voice, he was already engaged in a fight and wanted Oishi to re reconvene with him. Well, yeah, because the dude had a knife. Though he's wearing a stab-proof vest, I'm sure that'll work on his neck, his face, his arms, his legs. Oh, wait, it doesn't. But Oishi's hands were full as well. 
Oh, it's okay. Sorry, but can you wait a bit? The man raised both fists into a stance that hinted at him being acquainted with, acquainted with karate or some other form of martial art. Oh no, I just go full out street fight. Fuck, fuck, you know, the actual arts of fighting. You just full out, you just go for the kill. I don't go for, you know, techniques or whatever. You do what works. Which is taking as little headshots as possible while delivering a really, as hard of punches as you can to their face. And, you know, their jaw and chin area. Not chin, well, their jaw and their nose area. A couple kicks here and there. Hopefully get them on the ground, then you pin them down and then you just beat them from above. At least that's what I do. I because I have a very, I'm a larger person because I have a larger wingspan, I'm taller than most people. Once I get someone on the ground and I can pin them down, I have full control of the situation. And that's how I, that's just how you do it. Of course, Oishi, as an officer of the law, was discreetly, decently versed in judo. He also had the moxie to have been through his fair share of fights before. Fucking judo. God, I know so many, I know a couple people that have taken, like, really high levels of judo. Now, I don't want to fight him, because they scare the shit out of me. Despite, no, because of that, he could tell that the man in front of him was quite, was quite a bit better at fighting than he was. Ah, damn it. Thinking that this was going to be easy just because the order came from the Sonozaki family to release the hostage had been a big mistake. You're pretty good. It's been a while since I got this worked up. <laughs> Taste of fucking lead, bitch. I just, I just want to wish you to fucking pump someone full of lead. <laughs> when it's completely unnecessary as well. He's like, oh, whoops. Oishi played off the situation like it was no sweat. His opponent seeing uh, his attitude took that to mean that Oishi wasn't going to go down easily. The man wildly charged forward attempting to grab Oishi. I wouldn't grab him until he's a little bit more injured. If the man managed a successful clinch from his low stance, Oishi would have been tackled to the ground and end up being mounted. It was something you saw often when children fought. But it really was a bad position since you couldn't be do much better once you were in it. Oichi responded to that move, also lowering his stance to collide the with the man head on. Fucking two head on tackles, whoever's stronger and heavier wins automatically. The moment they clashed, Oichi grabbed the man's and lapel. As he yanked the lapel upwards, he smashed into the man's solar plexus with the elbow of the same arm. Jesus. It was a move from Oishi's own personal brand of brawling judo. judo. He then grabbed on with one, his free hand and attempted to throw his opponent with both hands. But the man lowered his center of gravity and swung his arms in a large arc, entwining them with Oishi's. Not only that, but he had for, forced both of Oishi's elbow, elbows to the outside, and Oishi knowing in an awkward position was in danger of exposing his back with his hand still clutching the man's chest. This guy practiced a keto or grappling, didn't he? Oishi cursing the fact that his fingers were twisted into the man's shirt and couldn't get away released his grip. See, that's why you don't go for a straight grapple and grabbing. That's why you hit them first before trying to do something fancy. But he was still in the awkward position of being bent over. And on top of that, and top it off, and to top it off at zero range, the man was able to read Oishi's mov movement completely as as he tried to squirm his way into a better position. And then took the palms of his hands and swiftly clapped them over both of Oishi's ears. Ah, oh, prick! That's just a dick move. That doesn't even hurt that much. That's just an ass move. Like, you can do so much more stuff that's painful in that situation. That's just kind of a dick. Which I'm very pro being a dick to Oishi. That's what I like. So I greatly appreciate what he just did. Ah! Clapping the ears in any other martial art except for self-defense was basically forbidden. 
Karate and Judo didn't recognize it as a legal technique. Who gives a fuck if it's legal or not? It was at that much of a simple and dangerous attack. Oishi raised both his hands as he tried to reflexively clutch at his own ears. But before that could happen, the man wrapped his arms around Oishi's neck. His thick biceps clenched firmly around the base of Oishi's ne neck like a vice. Choke his ass out! Do it! Snap his neck! Do it! Oh god, I would love it. Just a quick, just one-handed break of his neck. Just send him fucking out of this universe. God, I want that to happen so bad. Don't choke him out. Kill him. Oishi instinctively thought that he was going to be killed. I would have. After all, after all, it wasn't hard to believe that a man like this who was acute, accustomed to fighting could crush his opponent's neck from this position. Fuck crushing his neck. Break it. Oh, knee him right in the fucking kidney as well. Just to give him some extra pain. Because getting kneed in a kidney hurts like a motherfucker. Jesus Christ. But his opponent didn't do that. He had chosen to keep his hold and force Oishi to lose consciousness. That's why Oishi at that moment, even though his face was twitching, was grinning widely. Even though his opponent had a chance to kill him, he didn't choose to. He is an idiot! I would have. Just BAM! And it's over. Drop his lifeless corpse and laugh. He was thinking, ah, this guy has no intention of killing me. However, even though that might be the case, the man's hold on the neck The man's hold on his neck was by no means gentle. Well yes, you can't choke someone out by having a gentle hold on someone. In no time at all, Oishi's consciousness began to fade. Snap his neck! Oh fucking Akasaka's gonna save his ass. See what I would do I would wait and then knock the dude out. Because I hate Oishi so much. Having the experience of t being taken down countless times in Judo during his student days, Oishi was utterly resigned to the fact that it was over. 